Hey everyone, it's Lawrence here from Studio Hawk, and today I'm gonna to be walking through my first impressions of SG. Yes, we did get access to SG, thankfully. Even though we are here in Australia, we managed to do some sneaky stuff, get a VPN going and an email account. Um, we have been testing out SG for the last week or so, and I wanted to present today some findings, some interesting takes and impressions on SGE, and just walk you through what to expect from this rollout. So if you're asking yourself, what is SGE? Where have you been for the last couple of weeks? It's been huge news in the SGE community. Basically, now in the search results, you will see a large featured snippet on steroids. It's a large box with contextual links to informational content, to e-commerce links if you're looking for a particular brand or product, and a short generated response. We have a whole video breaking down SG as a concept in its entirety from what the information we got a couple of weeks ago. But now, testing is out. People are using SG actively in a beta test in the United States. We've got access now, which is really, really awesome. And I'm gonna run you through some example searches I've been looking at, and also give you some impressions and takes of what I think is gonna happen across the next couple months. All right, so let's dive into it. Let's get into the search generative experience. So let's go through and just show you what a normal search generative experience result will look like. So let's go with what is chat DTP. And this is what the result will look like. You get a, a little snippet of content here. Uh, and then we'll also have a couple of links on the side as citations for this. And there's a little sidebar here that actually expands out each one of these queries and breaks down where it's pulled those generated results for, from, which is really great. We also have, we have the knowledge panel down here and the normal search results also with the uh, FAQ schema too. So pretty similar in terms of the older results, but we've got this new blue panel and I think the colors change every single time you search or different types of searches generate different colors. There's something interesting going on there, but this is fundamentally how that new search result looks like. Okay, let's do some different searches here. Let's look up sushi in Paran, which is where I'm located right now here in Melbourne. Again, we'll get the generated prompt. It'll auto generate sometimes and sometimes it won't. I can show you how that looks later. And here we go, we've got the sushi around me, we've got a map pack here, we've got a couple of the more links, the, the web page based results that you usually see. We've also got Google business profiles up here. But then also you still have the Google business profiles down below as well. So you've got a quite big spread of results here. And even there's some double ups here. This is literally one of the restaurants around the corner uh, and it's appearing twice. So a bit more real estate for them, which is probably really good in terms of visibility. And then of course, down the below, you've got the normal search results. So that's how a local search result will look. It's expanded out. You've got contextual links on the side. You've got the locations that you can just straight away click on. It'll open up a, the Google business profile. And uh, yeah, you can look through the menu simply like that. So that's how a local search looks like. So we've got a local search here and I wanna really push SGE right now and give it a more of a expanded search uh, to try and test its ability. So what is a restaurant near me with outdoor seating that has vegan and gluten-free options? A couple of spelling mistakes, that's okay. I'm sure they can figure it out. Again, it's generating response. Okay, so there are many restaurants in Melbourne with vegan and gluten-free options. Here are some top restaurants. I don't know if it's picked up on the outdoorness of this. So this is interesting because it's tried to pull as much information as it can, but it didn't exactly nail the prompt that I've given it. All right, so I've got my food, I'm, I'm all filled up, and now I wanna buy some, some sneakers, some Nike sneakers. How does that look like in SGE? Let's have a look. So boom, we've already got the sponsored ads down here while the prompt is generating, which is quite interesting. So you've got a little bit more screen time as that uh, the SGE generated response is generating. Here we get a little information on Nike as a, a brand in itself, got links on the side, some informational content, perhaps some news. And then the on-trend styles, we've got a bunch of different product variations. We've got uh, review, uh, the star reviews in there as well, the price, where from, if I click on this result, it opens up the little panel on the side, gives me some pricing options uh, in terms of how much it would cost and even user reviews around this as well. And unfortunately, these were running a little bit too small for this guy. Let's try some straight up informational content. Let's think about 
who was the winner of the Nobel Peace Prize in 2023. I don't even know what's happened yet. Let's see what it gives us. And lo and behold, it hasn't really given us anything to go off here. There's no generated response. So sometimes things don't trigger with SGE, which is really interesting. Now this, this is another thing where with the response triggering sometimes and other times it will, when we start putting in more sensitive topics, health related things, financial questions, it's going to really trigger that year more search, that your money or life principle, where it's not going to give away, I don't think Google is going to give away information that's incorrect and maybe not rely on SGE to give it the, the response that's just generated off what content it reads online, because that can, can be quite dangerous in some way. So let's, let's have a look at what happens. So if I go financial advisors, let's go in, in Los Angeles. I did that search before. We get some sponsored links at the top, but no SG at all. It's just a very, very normal search results. If we go, I have back pain and I'm pregnant. What happens? It's a health related search. It does generate something and opens up and provides some suggestions, but it also states this informational purposes only, this information does not constitute medical advice or diagnosis. Cool. And something else that's quite new around uh, what Google have updated around the SERPs is now we're getting triple featured snippets. This is something that popped up last week, literally, and it's also generating in the SGE test. Um, it seems like Google's putting in a lot of effort and changes around what they're doing in the search results. And I think they might be using SGE as a bit of a platform to see if this actually is a better result than perhaps SGE. I'll leave the theory crafting till later. Uh, and then one final thing, maybe if I put in like what medicine should I take? It hasn't given me a result in SGE. Uh, it's given me a result in a featured snippet to NHS, which is a very qualified uh, source of information. So yeah, when we're looking at more sensitive topics, SGE is very sensitive around that as well. It knows not to give wrong information and navigate people to the right choices in information. And sometimes with SGE, it'll say, hey, get the AI powered overview for this search and ask you to generate first. I'm not sure why that happens, that it triggers sometimes automatically, it doesn't, and then it prompts you. I'm still trying to work out exactly why they do that. Um, but also like looking at something like, what is the best scary movie? They've already got a really nuanced search result here. If I click generate, it's gonna give me more information, of course. It's got some options here, but now they have follow-ups in conversational mode, which they've introduced too. So here's a question as a follow-up. What movie has the most jump scares? Now, if I go to that, I get a completely different user experience where I'm looking at and having more of a conversation with Google about the information I'm giving it. Really, really interesting. And then like we're going down here and I can prompt it with more questions. What is the scariest jump scare ever? And it's gonna give me more information. So this is more of that chat-based style search that we've seen in different uh, AI tools currently, Google's introduced that as a more of a side feature, I feel, top of the SGE result. All right, so I've run through a couple of example searches, and of course I could sit here for hours and show you different types of search results. But really, some of the response that I've seen as well, and some of the responses I agree with is the lack of citations in some of these searches. So if I type in best way to get rid of, let's say best way to get rid of mice, didn't trigger, but what if I did like, what is the best hangover cure? What information would it give, would it give us? Great. You now it's giving us a lot of different information, but I don't know exactly where this information is coming from. It could be coming from these search results. It could be coming from the ones down below. It could be coming from these featured snippets. There's no actual citation within the text it's giving us. And this is one of the criticisms they've been uh, getting at on Twitter as well. Uh, one of the examples we brought up is why not put contextual links within these text-based uh, results so people know they can click through on different information that's presented to them too. It's a really simple change, but I think it would add a lot of value to uh, what's going on in these search results because Google have been so adamant about authorship and making sure that everything that's put out there has some sort of citation and, a, and it's coming from experience and expertise, but to have a general result that's just a bit of content that you don't exactly know where it's coming from, it can feel a little bit shady as well. All right, another thing I've noticed is around the load time of SGE. It takes a couple seconds to generate, and I feel like even that couple seconds, and some people are saying even up to eight seconds sometimes for it to load, or even having to click on it, it just, it just kind of defeats the purpose, right? 
It'd be much quicker for me to scroll down and click on one of these featured snippets or click on a result than wait for a generated response that's gonna tell me the same information potentially as the first result that I click on. For, for Google to go out there and say, we wanna create this great experience, but not have it really generate that quickly. I know a lot of AI tools don't generate this stuff quickly. This is one of the, this is the most popular search engine in the world. And if they flip over and it takes a little bit of a lag time for these results to generate and people to click through, it's gonna lose a bit of muster in my opinion. So one thing for sure, it's they definitely have to look at that load time of these results and make sure they come up really fast if they're gonna be used. Now, something really cool that I think about when I'm looking through the results and how much inf more information that we can get out of these search results is, I think adding the word end to anything can create a different dimension to a search result. And something that as a modifier is not really that used. And I don't really see that coming up on a lot of the, the keyword research tools that we see. They often take, you know, show us really chunky middle keywords or fathead keywords or long tail keywords. But I'm thinking about these longer than longer than long tail keywords. Like, for example, this previous search I said, how to cure a hangover with nausea and be ready for a run the next day. Like maybe these types of searches are gonna be quite useful for SGs and those results. And I can imagine people that aren't really that experienced with search engines and thinking, I can just chuck anything in there and hopefully get a result. Um, these more nuanced searches that are maybe even like 10 words long might be the play in terms of developing content strategies too. Something to think about long-term, that, that keyword end might be really, really important in the future. So stepping back and looking at everything, what do I think? SGA just needs more work. They've released this as a test and thankfully they have because the SEO community has given a lot of critical feedback, a lot of constructive feedback, but the response, I gotta say, it's it's been a bit lukewarm. I think expectations were pretty high on what SGA was gonna be able to do and present, but really it's just an addition to the search results that you question if it's even entirely necessary or is it enhancing the experience. For some searches, I think it's really, really good and really, really relevant. But in other searches, I feel the last you know, the, the last iteration of what Google was presenting in simply 10 blue links in their featured snippet, let's say, was doing the job. So where do we go from here? Well, the testing is actually going to run uh, until the end of the year, until December 2023. So a lot more information is going to come out during that time. And I think Google are really going to take on a lot of this feedback they're getting as well. So we'll be sure to stay on top of it. So stay tuned to our channel, subscribe, like, comment, and let me know what you think. Thank mm -hmm. you.